This video describes new improvements to 5-axis circle segment finishing now available in Esprit. More indicative of its new capabilities, the former plane finishing operation has been renamed to circle segment finishing in this release of version 5.2. In addition to planar surfaces, this operation now supports single and double curvature surfaces, making it the preferred and specialized strategy for circle segment cutting tools. Additionally, the operation's new capabilities simplify the processing of complicated five-axis machined parts, allowing end users to fully capitalize on this innovative cutting tool advancement, producing better quality parts and record time. In this video, we will program multiple circle segment finishing operations, highlighting the new functionality. To start, we will create a circle segment finishing operation to machine the cylindrical surfaces shown here. Note that the cylinder has a tilt of 7.5 degrees from the global z-axis and the freeform features work plane uses this tilted plane. Select circle segment finishing from the freeform ribbon. On the tool path tab, there is a new freeform part category. The end user can choose whether they want to limit the tool path creation to only planar surfaces or everything. For this example, because we have cylindrical, conical, and freeform faces, we will select everything. For parallel passes, we want the passes to be perpendicular to the cylinder's center axis. In order to accomplish this, we will select W axis negative of feature plane. This option will create parallel passes that are perpendicular to the freeform work plane Z vector. For demonstration purposes only, we'll disable boundary passes. We will enable them later, allowing us to isolate the parallel passes for a more in-depth evaluation. On the Orientation tab, let's confirm that Automatic Orientation and Dynamic Arc Range are enabled. This will dynamically adjust the contact point throughout the operation. Lastly, on the Links tab, add the Radial Around Axis option to the Rapid Links category and move it first in the hierarchy list. Change Reference to Z-axis and Rad Point and digitize a point that's offset appropriately from the part's main cylinder. All linking passes will follow this arc centered around the specified global axis and sized in accordance with the selected position. Visually, notice how the parallel passes are perpendicular to the tilted cylinder axis, just as we configured. Doing so prevented interruptions on the first pass and helps the toolpath better conform to the overall part shape. Let's further review the toolpath efficiency by utilizing toolpath analysis. Although not new for this release, notice the dynamic contact point throughout this toolpath. Initially, the contact point is at the top of the tool form near the cutter shank. This allows the first pass to be fully engaged, providing ample chip space and yields the best surface finish. As the tool progresses downward, the contact point transitions to the middle. Near the bottom, the contact point continues its transition to the bottom of the tool form near the spherical tip. This ensures that the entire surface is fully machined. In addition to providing ideal cutting conditions, a dynamic contact point evenly distributes wear over the entire tool form, prolonging the life of the tool. For the parallel passes between the two opposing ribs, notice the changing tool orientation. The system automatically adjusts the tool orientation, tilting upward and away from each rib while maintaining the proper contact point. This guarantees that the tool path is collision free and residual material is minimized. Let's simulate now and see the machine behavior. You may have noticed a stair step effect occurring in the internal corners and near the bottom of the cylinder. This is residual material and a direct consequence of not utilizing boundary passes. Let's address this by editing the existing operation. In the Tool Path tab, enable Boundary Passes and set the incremental depth to 0.75 mm. Regenerate the Tool Path. Notice that a series of connecting passes were generated at the part's exterior borders. The system automatically calculates the number of passes needed based off the in-process stock, ensuring that the first pass removes all residual material and that the tool is not excessively engaged. Simulate again and notice that the boundary passes are executed after the conclusion of the parallel passes. The parts surfaces are now fully machined. Bottom flange face shown here has curvature in two directions, lofted from a convex and concave curve, making it freeform. Let's create another circle segment finishing operation on this face. For parallel passes, we want the passes to be perpendicular to the global x-axis, starting from the outside contour, working progressively towards the cylinder. 
In order to accomplish this, we will select X axis. Lastly, on the links tab, edit radial around axis, changing reference to X axis and rad point. Digitize a point that's offset appropriately from the part. Visually notice how the parallel passes are aligned as configured and the boundary passes on the appropriate edges. Let's simulate and see the machine behavior. Notice how rotary motion is initially minimal. Once the tool reaches the rib, the system automatically adjusts the tool orientation, tilting upward and away from the rib and cylinder, again ensuring that the tool path is collision-free and residual material is minimized. To summarize, Esprit now supports single and double curvature surfaces in circle segment finishing, simplifying the processing of complicated five-axis machine parts. Thank you for watching this Esprit product feature video. For more information about this and other new features in Esprit, refer to the release bulletin and product help.